Greetings and salutations, folks, and welcome once again, as always, to another helping of Mr. H's Hot Pot. You join me today for Letters from TV Licensing, Volume 19, where, in a moment, I'm going to read out my latest letter from TV Licensing, or Threatogram, as we like to call them, here in the legally licensed-free community, for you guys. Now, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to try out the green screen technology once again. I did do one of these style of videos in one of my previous letters from TV licensing, and it did go over quite well with you, the viewer. Unfortunately, me being the perfectionist that I am, I wasn't really happy with the end product. I didn't think the lighting was very good on it. It, it made me a t-shirt clash with my complexion at the time, and I just ended up a, an orange blob, really. And as one or two of you out there rather wittily commented, uh, I resemble the Tango Man from that advert, which was running in the late 90s or early 2000s. I can't remember when that was running, but... Uh, that's what you said I look like, so I took that on board and uh, I just basically reverted back to what I've been doing previously, which was just going out in the old jalopy and reading out the latest love letter from the good old folks at TV Licensing. But uh, I've decided to give it another world and see if I can crack this green screen technology because it'll help in other videos that I'll be doing in the future. Anyway, enough waffling about green screens, that's not what you've come here to watch, you've come here to see what goodies TV licensing have sent me this month. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into this month's letter from TV licensing, shall we? Now, assuming that the old green screen technology is working, you should be able to see at the back of me a portion of this month's letter from TV licensing. And as you can see, up in the top right-hand corner, we have the TV licensing logo, as always. Beneath that, we have the TV licensing web address. It's in small print there, as always. And as always, I'll state here and now that unless you really need to go on there to do some kind of business, i.e. cancel your TV license, don't bother going on there. There's nothing on there for the legally licensed-free person, but if you're looking to cancel your TV license, that's one way of doing it, and you can visit that website. Below that, we have the enforcement division, that this has supposedly been sent out from, which is my local area. I've removed that area name for obvious reasons, but they've put that in bold and in orange to try and jump out and spook me a little bit. Beneath that, we have the date, September 2021. Now, for those of you who follow this series of videos, you'll probably note that last month's letter from TV Licensing, Volume 18, was also dated September 2021. Now, I can only surmise that the Lassie database has cocked up and it's uh, sent me one for September twice. It does happen from time to time. Or maybe TV licensing is so hard up now because people are cancelling the licence because of videos like this that um, they've simply, any letters that they've not used from the previous month, they send out the following month to get rid of them. Who knows? Who cares? Let's crack on. Then beneath that, we have the reference number. That is a unique reference number to my address, so I've removed that also for obvious reasons. But it will be in bold and it will be in black. Over on the top left-hand corner, we have the title, The Legal Occupier. And then in that blank space, there will be my address and a number of uniquely identifiable QR codes to my address. So I've removed those, again, for obvious reasons. The only reason TV licensing use the term the legal occupier for Mr H is they haven't a flipping clue who lives at Mr H's address and that's the way Mr H wants to keep it. Then the letter goes on to state, official notice, investigation opened. They've put that in bold and they've put it in orange and it was also visible through a secondary window in the envelope to again try and spook me and you know try and get the beads of sweat on my forehead. You know, and uh, and the urge to stand up on the back of my neck type of thing. It didn't work, it never does. Then it states, to the legal occupier. This is an official warning that we are carrying out an investigation of your address. We have asked you to contact us several times, but you have not responded. As I'm not legally required to do. There is still no record of a TV licence at this property where one cancels out the other. It's obvious that if I haven't contacted you, then there won't be a record of a TV licence at, at my address, was there? But, you know, this is the logic of TV licensing. Then it states, the law. And they've just put that in bold and in black to make me sit up and take notice. 
It is a criminal offence to watch or record live TV programmes on any channel, or to download or watch BBC programmes on iPlayer, unless you have a TV licence. It doesn't matter what equipment you use, whether a TV set, desktop computer, laptop, tablet, mobile phone, games console, digital box, or DVD slash VHS recorder. And just going off topic for a moment, who uses a VHS recorder anymore? You know, I think I've only ever seen those in charity shops now. But uh, if you do use a VHS recorder, please leave a comment below and explain why you're still using it, because I'd love to know. But um, why they've listed a whole host of electronic devices though, I don't know, because they could have simply left it with, it doesn't matter what equipment you use. And that would have uh, got the message across. But as always, t TV licensing like to hear the sound of their own writing, I think. Then it states in bold, how do you can stop this investigation? As if they're throwing me a lifeline and giving me a bit of a chance to get me house in order. And then there's three options. The first one is obviously TV licensing's preferred method. As it states, buy a license at, and then there's a subdivision of the website where I can go and pay for a TV license. Or by calling, there's a telephone number, you can choose the payment method that suits you best. Well, I already have the payment method that suits me best by not paying you anything because I legally don't need a TV license. Then the second option is, if you have recently moved, please move your old TV license to your new address at, and then there's another subdivision of the TV licensing website, or by calling and they repeat the number that they gave me in the first option. And it states, with your TV license number to hand. Well, I won't be doing that one either. Then there's the third option. And obviously because it's the least preferred method, they've uh, put it as the third option. Let us know that you don't use TV receiving equipment at this address at, then there's another subdivision of the TV licensing website, or by calling the telephone number once again. We may confirm this with a quick visit. Now, as always, as I always state in these videos, TV licensing cancel out any effort that you may make to go and jump through all the hoops to tell them that you don't need a TV license by confirming it with a quick visit, as they call it. I doubt it's a quick visit. It probably gets into a bit of a, a bit of a, a, an argument and a battle of wills if you was uh, foolish enough to let them in. Then the letter goes on to clause. If we don't hear from you, our enforcement division will schedule a visit. Fair enough, you can schedule what you want. I'm not obliged to talk to you, am I? Should the investigation find that you've been watching, recording or downloading TV illegally, you could be prosecuted. The maximum penalty is a £1,000 fine plus any legal costs and or compensation you may be ordered to pay. Now, TV licensing always like to promote the fact that the maximum penalty is a £1,000 fine. In reality, that is very rarely, if ever, handed down from the, from the bench. And the reason for that is courts take into account things like if it's your first offence, your ability to pay, your income and all things like that. I should imagine that a thousand pound fine would only be reserved for someone who's very rich and is an hardcore evader, to be honest, but um, that's just my theory. Likewise, once again, if you have been fined a thousand pound, please leave your comment below and uh, explain how the case went. I'd love to hear from you. Then the letter closes, yours faithfully, J. Jeffers, Jane Jeffers, Enforcement Manager. And then they repeat the area that they try to make out that this letter has been sent out from. Once again, they're trying to make this letter look like it's been tailored solely to my case, when that's not uh, the case at all, basically. Now, what I will say regarding Jane Jeffers is she must have one hell of an enforcement patch, because I speak to people from all over the country through the comments section of uh, these videos, and people who live in the far-flung corners of the country state that it has Jane Jeffers' number on it. So it must be that she has a very big patch, like I say, and she must be a very hard-working girl. The letter closes with, P.S. If you have recently bought a licence, thank you. You do not need to reply to this letter. And, it, you know, it could also state, though, that, uh, P.S. If you haven't bothered buying a licence, or you've no intention of buying a licence, you do not need to reply to this letter also, because... That's the law. Now, what I will say regarding them using, you know, wording like this is that if it was anybody else, if it was a private company, for example, you know, your local takeaway that was writing to you and stating, 
P.S. If you have recently bought a pizza from us, thank you. You do not need to reply to this flyer. They'd soon be uh, told to remove that from the flyers, I'm sure. But uh, I think because TV licensing is loosely based with the government, they turn a bit of a blind eye where possible. But uh, of course, I have no evidence to back that up. The letter then states, in Scotland, Scottish criminal law applies. A report will be sent to the creator fiscal, who will decide on prosecution. Once again, if you needed any proof that these are printed in the thousands and sent out en masse, there you have it, because it's clear that I live in England and uh, Scottish criminal law does not apply in England and Wales, so uh, they wouldn't need to tell me about that, but as they're a bog standard template, that proves it. Then we have a little, what's supposed to be an enforcement officer's visit to proof stamp and a signature. And I can clearly see that this is just part of the printing of this letter. You know, it's not a wet ink stamp and the signature doesn't even marry up to Jane Jeffers. It's not Jane Jeffers on that. I think it's Scott Robson, which is a name that does appear on these threatograms from time to time. As always, the letter closes with, please do not write below this line. I've no idea why they put that on and um, only TV licensing seem to know what that's for. Because how would they know if you did squiddle something on there? They never would, would they? Right then, so what do we make of this month's letter from TV licensing? And once again, will it nudge Mr H to run out and either purchase a TV license or contact TV licensing to tell them that he doesn't legally require one? Well, no, it's just the usual guff, isn't it? Although I haven't seen this template before, and I haven't covered it in my Letters from TV licensing series. It's just the same old rubbish. Threats of a thousand pound. You must contact us. Trying to give the appearance that I must contact them. When legally, I don't need to bother if I don't want to. And I can file that straight in the bin. Which is where it'll be going once I've made this video. So that was it folks. That was Letters from TV licensing volume 19. Now, although I've done two on the bounce. It may get another couple of months before I make another Letters from TV licensing video, simply because I get twice as from time to time, and um, they don't come up with anything new. They're usually the same old stuff, and I don't like to repeat myself. But hopefully, we'll get something new next month, and I'll be here once again. Please leave your comments below on how you think the green screen has turned out in this particular video. Hopefully, it'll be quite favourable, and uh, we may be doing this more going forward. So, until the next time, from myself, Mr. H, as always, it is bye-bye for now.